In this video, I'll show you exactly how to customize your chart like a professional trader and I promise you I will show you some settings that you haven't seen before. But before doing that, a quick reminder that all the best tools for day trading and investing will be linked in the description that includes broker, scanner, charts, and newsfeed. Let's get in the video. If you haven't realized already, you can see that the border is pretty big on trading view. And when you get the chart, normally they're going to be zoomed in at 100% like you see over here. And by doing control plus or control minus, you're going to be able to make this border also smaller. So if you try to fit more chart on a screen, this could be a useful setting. Of course, it's going to make the font smaller, but we'll touch up on that later. When it comes to the setting, there's a couple things that you probably want to do is make sure that you have the candle selected. If you want to use bar or hollow candle, it's going to be up to you. I personally don't really like to trade on this. When we look at a shorter time frame, we can see that it gets choppy in a sense versus just the regular candle it just feels better considering that you have the candle selecting you want to go back to settings and then what you're going to do is just go over here if you want to change the color it's pretty obvious these are going to be the settings so this you're going to be able to choose the color you want if you want to see the color i have this is the code if you want to see this color if you like it it's going to be the code something i tend to do quite often is when i test out a color or i just try some stuff i just go over here and i click plus and then i click like add so at least I have a backup of the color that I'm creating so when the layout is done I can switch things around just to make sure everything is good and then I can go back to the color that I save in this layout so it's going to be saved over here as you can see and you can save a bunch of colors which I think is quite important the following thing we'll do is just make sure that you have extended trading hours if you're looking at a daily chart for your setting what's going to happen is when you go over here it's not going to be available so you have to go into the intraday and then after you're going to be able to select extended trading hours and then it's going to be good to go the following setting is going to be position and time zone normally i choose toronto or new york because it's going to be the market time and it's really important if you want to trade the u.s market if you're trading a different market or crypto put it to the time that you prefer but normally when people talk about trading they talk about the new york or toronto time moving on to the status line i have a few things that i did remove if you do want to choose the logo or the title or more market status it's just going to put a lot of things on your chart which i also think are not going to be very useful it just it just keeps on adding up and then you barely see your chart anymore there's just too much over here so i like to remove at least the logo and the reason for that is over here you can see that i have the watermark we're going to add this later if it's not already there title i also don't need the title open market status i don't need to see it open ilo close value ohlc value these are pretty good to have bar change i don't need to see this volume i don't need it last day change value i don't need to see it and then we have the indicator we'll leave this for the moment and then we'll come back to this later so we only have a few more settings to go over before really getting into the interesting stuff but for the rest of the setting previous day close i like to hide it the reason why is if you put the value or even the line what's going to happen is in the pre-market when we're trading during this time this previous day close is going to be sometime like the previous day over here and it's not going to be the actual previous day close which is the one that you want it might sound a little complicated but it just doesn't work well when the market is not open so i like to just not have it on so this one you can leave it or remove it and after that symbol is going to be pretty important you want the value for sure this is the value over here i don't like to have the line over here that's going to move with the chart just the value is going to be good enough the next thing is going to be indicator and financial so i have some moving average on the chart if you put the indicator it's going to show every indicator over here and your timeline or your price is going to be very confusing because you're going to have a bunch of stuff on here this is a good example you hard to see which one is what so I like to remove it. This over here is going to be pretty important. I like to just put value. So whenever we're trading in the pre and the post and you're looking at a daily chart, it's going to show you over here what is the price of the after hour. It's going to show you the line that I selected. So it's going to be orange. This is going to be the pre and this is blue is going to be the post. For the next one, which is going to be the high and low, I like to remove this. The reason why is when you're looking at a different time frame, it's going to show you different high and low. And this is the same thing for the intraday it's just extremely confusing and there's absolutely no value you can see that now it's moving this over here if you put it tighter it's going to be this over here 
So if you're moving your charts around, this value is always going to change. So it's going to be hard to know which one you're referring to. So moving on to the Canva, this over here is just going to be the color that I personally have. This is the number. And then after vertical and horizontal grid, then over here, this is the value if you want to copy it. And then you have pan separator this is going to be the value if you want to set it so these are just this line over here and then you have going to have the line this one is going to be this line over here text it's going to be this text over here it's pretty simple what's going to be really important is going to be the watermark this you want to make sure you have it and this is this over here i like to just have it on a darker color just like this or even like this so it's pretty easy to see which stock i'm looking at a feature that's really important is going to be the top and the bottom margin this you want to make sure you have a bit of space otherwise when the price is moving it's going to be really hard to follow along so i like to personally have have at least a 10 and then at the bottom I like to keep it normally the same thing a 10 also and the bar right is just going to be this over here so if you want to select a certain things you can move it but this doesn't really matter because with trading view you can just at least move the chart and this is going to be good enough by the way if you're getting value from this video don't forget to check out the links in description I did link all the best tools for day trading and investing that includes brokers scanner charts and newsfeed Let's get back to the video. When it comes to the trading, I personally have everything unselected and also event. I only have dividends, split and earnings. Alert line is going to be orange. So you can see that these are these indicator. Now we'll jump into the fun part, which is going to be showing you how to really maximize your chart and use them for day trading, because right now at least they look good, but it's not done. So now we can see on this chart, we have a lot of indicator. Something I don't like is when I look at a two minute or even a one minute to see all these indicator. If you want to customize everything, this is how you would do it. Visibility. Right now we have the MA ribbon. So instead of having three moving average or four, you can just have it all in one. And to add indicator, very simple, just select the one you want and then just click and it's going to pop up on your chart. You're going to go over here to your settings, anything below a 15 minute. I don't want to see it. So you're going to put it all the way up to 59 and also 15, or maybe it's a different time frame. but you can see now we don't see all the moving average. We only have VWAP and here we go. Now we're looking at a chart on daily and we do have the indicator. Now we look at a 15 minute, we do have the moving average, but we don't have VWAP. And if we go to a three minute, we only have VWAP. So this is a really simple setting, but all the indicator I have are most likely not going to be for every time frame. Moving average are normally just for the higher time frame. VWAP is only going to be for my intraday and also the short time frame. So this is how you would do this. And same thing I did for VWAP all the way up to a five minute. I want to see it. And when you have this setting dialed up, just go back to your settings. Then what you're going to do over here is going to go into the status line. And then what you can do is remove everything. And here you go. So now you have a very clean chart with nothing on top and all your indicator are going to appear on the proper time frame. Now we're going to be moving on to the alert section. And I really like trading view for one thing. The alerts work in the pre and the post market. And let me show you how. When you have a chart like this, just go look at like a five minute. And then what I'll do is I'll add an alert and then you have extended hours. So it's very, very interesting. You can put the regular time frame. So if you're looking at a daily chart and you put the same indicator over here, it's going to be regular trading hours. So it's not going to work in the pre and the post market. So when you put an alert, just make sure you're in the pre and the post market and then select the one you want. So now example, I'll put 1050 and then I'll create it. And then it's going to show me whenever it crosses, even if it's during the pre and the post. This is a really, really simple thing, but it's pretty much the only platform that allows you to do this, which is crazy for me. So going back into alerts, a common strategy when it comes to swing trading is going to be to trail a moving average. The way you would want to do this is just go over here and go into add alerts. And then you're going to have over here the trading price. So this is your price. And then we're going to have crossing. And then what you can do is you can put your moving average. So when the price crosses the moving average, I'm going to get alerted. So then you can create it and then you have an alert on your moving average. So whenever this price is going to cross in a couple days, in a few weeks or a few months, it's going to alert you. So now we're going to move to the next section, which is going to be linking different window on different screen. This is something that is new to trading view. And it's a setting that I really like because when you have something on your one screen and you want it to be linked to the other, this is how you would do it. So for this video, let's pretend that these are two different screen or maybe two different time frame. 
So you have this one on the five minute, this one is gonna be on your daily. And what you can do is go over here and now add a symbol color. So right now, when you change one example, you change this one it's going to be linked to this one. So when you have charts on a different screen, these are going to be linked together. So you can link a bunch of them. You can see all the color choice, but this is how you do it. Just link the color over here. This is really important and it's going to link to the next section. And I'll show you a couple of settings before getting there. But if you have example, a stock scanner, so let's go to stock over here, screener, and let's load something like a strong scan. So these are gonna be the one that are really strong at the moment. So right now I can look at my scanner and then I can click at what's moving like this and then you can have maybe a couple scan open. So let's move back to this window only. Another way you can link stuff is going to be by doing this over here. So now let's say that you have two windows like this over here. So one over here, one over here, and you want them to be sync. What you can do is go symbol and then just click this. And now everything is going to be sync and it's going to be perfect like this sometime when you only have two. If you have more than two, the only thing you need to do is go over here to settings and then you're going to have to just put title. And then over here, you're going to be able to see that now you have this logo over here. So we're going to do the same thing there. So you're going to put title and then you can link it to different things. So let's say we don't want these two to be linked. Then you're going to put this one and this one. So if I change this, it's not going to change this one. But if ever I have two of this one over here, you get the principle. Now it's going to be sync. So if you have four of them, quite simple, just choose which one you match with which one. And then everything is going to be synced together. And I think it's a really, really good way of doing stuff. So we're going to move this back to one over here and then we'll make this smaller. We'll pop another window and then we're going to load a scanner. So we can go back to maybe a one week scan. These are going to be the strongest stock. And if you want to check out my scan because I did create a bunch of them, it's going to be linked down below. So right now we have a few stock, nothing crazy. So if you want to select all of them, just, you know, just shift and then select whatever you want. And then what you can do is click add to watch list or create new watch list. So you're going to right click on this, add or create new watch list. And let's just put 11 for this one. Doesn't really matter. And then what you can do is you can exit this over here and you can go back to full screen. And then what you have is now you have a new watch list and then you can just space bar your way out of this watch list to just check what's moving. So space bar, space bar, space bar. And then you can go through a really long list of stock in a matter of a few minutes versus having to go through your scan and connecting everything. I just put everything into a watch list. And when I'm done, what I do is I just delete the watch list and then I'm completely out. So I'll link in the description all the scanner that I have for TradingView because I think they're really, really good. And if you're already paying for TradingView, there's no reason to pay for another scan. And if you want to get TradingView, I'll also have the link down below. So thanks for watching. Peace.